What it do, Dream Team? It's your boy D Neil back with another reaction video, guys, and here we are with a bushfire where flames ripped through towns. Death toll will rise as bushfire rages on. This is in Australia. And just from the picture on the screen right now, it looks absolutely tragic. Before we can dive in, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel, ring the notification bell, get a video a thumbs up, and let's see this. As the year and the decade comes to an end, the country is burning. It's been labeled Jeez. the worst fire season ever recorded, an apocalypse, a nightmare, oh and like God. looking into the gates of hell. From the New South Wales Victoria border all the way to the central coast, nine blazes reached oh emergency warning God. level today. Here's what we know right now. Nine in one day? Jesus. Two men, believed to be a father and son, were killed trying to defend their home in the south coast town no. of Cabago overnight. A 72-year-old man is still unaccounted for in the nearby town of Ballara. The RFS says dozens of homes have been destroyed and late today, Police warned all telecommunications, including mobile services and the internet, will be lost tonight on the south wow. coast between Nowra and Maruya. Tonight, we have reporters standing by across the region with the latest information. First to Jade McMillan near Cabago, where those two men died. Jade, what do we know about the tragedy? Well, sadly, we know that a 63-year-old man and his 29-year-old son were killed while trying to defend their property near Cabago. A woman, the wife of one of those men and mother of the other man, returned home this morning and found their bodies. We also know that a third person is still missing at Ballara. Now, the Prince's Highway here north of Bega, the road that would normally go through to Cabago, is still closed. But locals there have told us that the fire that swept through their small community was terrifying. There is believed to be significant mm -hmm. damages to buildings. Photos from the main street show rubble where businesses should be standing. Mm -hmm. And residents say that embers started spot fires right throughout that area and the fire moved incredibly incredibly quickly. I can't even I fathom seeing a fire this bad like and just imagining these two men trying to fight to protect their home and unfortunately losing to that fire and passing is legit heartbreaking like father son like come on man Jesus. Selby Stewart, let's go to you now. You're at Sussex Inlet. You were there as the Karawan fire raged. What's the latest there on the ground? Karina, this fire is still very much out of control and it's now no, so large no. it reaches from the northern parts of Ulladulla all the way up to the southern parts of Nowra and today it burnt with such ferocity. We were at a roadblock uh, down on the Princess Highway when a spot fire from the Karawan blaze exploded next to us. We had to flee alongside police and residents in that area down to Sussex Inlet oh where the one road God. in and out has now been closed. And it's been a very trying time for all RFS crews and residents here. Luckily, the spot fire was pushed away by the southerly, but it bought the Karawan fire front, which had those pyrocumulus clouds. And when it hit, it was terrifying. It was completely dark. There were embers flying overhead and the wind was so strong and the fire was so ferocious, you could hear trees exploding uh, in the forest. So it's been an incredibly difficult day, very treacherous and unpredictable Jesus. conditions right up and down the coast. Also down in Batemans Bay, where we know that <gasps> homes have been lost there. Uh, reporter Leave Casbin has more. That fire, oh my God. Those fires are absolutely raging and out of control. Definitely got to show all the gratitude to all the firefighters out there, as well as those who are defending their homes and fighting against these fires and doing all they can, because those fires are literally just breathtaking. Like They definitely look like they are going to destroy anything in their path. And the, the, the fact that the Australian people, Australian firefighters, would be willing to stand up against that is incredible. My heavens. After weeks of threatening coastal towns, the South Coast bushfires God. suddenly roared into full force. 
triggering warnings to residents from Cooma to Bega and north to Batemans Bay and beyond. Seek shelter as fire approaches. As the blaze struck with ferocity, emergency crews were stretched thin, struggling <clears throat> in chaotic conditions. Go! Go! Strong, changeable winds fanning the destruction. In Batemans Bay, holiday makers retreated to the water as visibility plummeted. Shops and cafes shut it up. It's horrific, it's like a war zone. Catastrophic, no words to describe it. Homes lost up the back of us. Scared, nervous. <laughs> um, kind of want to go home but can't go home yet. So yeah, just planning on where to go from here. As firefighters battle these horrendous conditions, you can hear gas bottles exploding just a few kilometres from here. And people have come here to the water where they feel safer. Spot fires arrived under raging winds, with many residents choosing to stay and protect. It looks like it's jumped the highway up west of us, and it's just roared down like a bloody freight train. If it gets too close, mm. we're leaving, we're staying in the house, or if it doesn't, we're going to sit outside trying to help the fireys. At Lake Conjola, locals watched as dozens of homes and businesses burnt down. At Mogo Zoo, a superhuman effort to move animals and protect structures was underway. Just the, the black cloud completely covering the sky. The cloud of smoke from these fires just completely engulfing the sky is just literally horror. Looking at it's absolute horror when you look up there and look at it. We got out and we watered everything we possibly could. Any species of animal My that was small enough uh, or in an area that we couldn't protect, we caught up. Staff grateful that rare creatures were saved. A moment of defiance against a fire that seemed unstoppable. Leave Casman, ABC News, Batemans Bay. Now to Hamish McDonald, who spent the day at the evacuation centre in Bega. Hamish, thousands of visitors have had to flee holiday homes along the coast. What's the mood like there? Uh, Karina, I should let you know that just as we go to air tonight in the eastern states, we're feeling a few drops of rain falling uh, here at the Bega showground. Not a lot, not enough probably to get excited about, but significant nonetheless. Uh, today has been absolutely extraordinary. I've covered plenty of bushfires in my reporting career. I have never experienced anything like this. You need to be here to understand what it is like being in communities Jesus. that are entirely cut off. To the south there were bushfires, to the west there were bushfires, to the north there were bushfires and in every direction roads were cut off and that's what saw so many hundreds, indeed thousands of people, take refuge wherever they could. With my fire God. coming at them from the north, the south and west, there was only one direction for residents and holidaymakers to head. Along the south coast, hundreds fled to the water any way they could. It's the unprecedented um, things we're it's seeing. Like there's nowhere else to go. It's coming from all directions. And it's, it's nothing small. It's raging from all directions. It's swallowing everything in its path. So there's nowhere to go but to the water. This is just insane. At the moment, particularly with all our surf clubs on the far south coast, where we have, you know, approximately you know six to seven thousand people sheltering at Bermagui alone, over four thousand wow. one hundred people there. Overnight, a time lapse video captured the moment hell enveloped the town of Brogo. It was just like looking into the, like the gates of hell. It was just incredible. It was so. Tense, and there were more than one section in our cell. And that's when I realised that we'd done the right thing to go. Yeah. Caroline Long and her dogs got out of their home in nearby Verona at 1am. It's a weatherboard house on top of a ridge next to a mountain. Yeah, I don't think there's anything left. Daniel Marshall spent today fighting to save a mate's house just a day after his family lost their own home. Most Tense thing that I've ever experienced. House was saved. Shed gone. Everyone's alive. Paul Carroll lost all but his car. This is it. This is my five kids, my missus and me. This is, it's all we own. I lost our whole house, but I didn't get my nana's rings out, my wedding rings. So I'm really sad about that. 
Can you actually cope with this, with the scale of I don't know. I don't know. The bigger showground is... So many people losing so much. I mean, thank God that they escaped with their lives, but still, like, it's hard. It's, it's really hard to start over and start from scratch and lose your home, lose all those those things that you can't put a price tag on. Priceless stuff. Jesus, man. One of many evacuation points for families now locked in by road closures. Anna Van Gouda and Rachel Lamont left their home in Tanger, but couldn't convince their father and cousin to leave. I just said, I can't, I, I can't say goodbye, I can't say goodbye. It's not the end. I don't want to say goodbye. They've been arriving here all afternoon in their hundreds, maybe even thousands, with their families, their trailers, their caravans, some even with their boats. If they are celebrating tonight here at the Bega Showgrounds, and it's felt like night all day, it'll simply be that they made it out safely. Hamish McDonald, ABC News, Bega. That's just absolutely horrifying. And I'm so sorry to anybody who's ever been in one of those or ever been through any natural disaster or anything like that. It's, I can't even fathom. That's insane. That's all we have for this video. If you enjoyed that, make sure you check out this one. Also, subscribe, ring notification bell, give the video a thumbs up. It's your boy, Daniel. Out.